Hello and welcome to your September 2023 Love Life reading for each sign. This video is timestamped, so you don't have to watch the whole shebang or skip forward and, and look for your zodiac or your sign, right? Because that's just how nice I am. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for being here. Um, because it is a love life reading, they're not going to be super in-depth, right? Um, so they're not going to be 20 minutes per, per sign or something. We just have a quick look. What the guides can tell us uh, with regards to um, what's happening in that department, so to speak. I just want to quickly shuffle my cards. And I'm using the star code Astro deck that I have um, by, let me just read this, Heather Rowan Robbins. I quite like that deck. It's, it's here. And then the other deck I'm using is by Diane Cooper. Um, is it? Yeah, Diane Cooper. And it's the Atlantis deck, which is this one. Right. Anyway, these are the, the, um, the decks that sort of are here. And so without further ado, um, let's, let's get the show on the road. Before we start, please, please, please like, subscribe and share. Really, really important. Ah, you know, seeing myself, it's been less than three weeks that I had my beard trimmed and now everything grows out. I, I look feral, can't help it. Right? What I really want is for this to be long enough so it can be pointy. Anyway, uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> this is the Love Life reading, beginning with the sign of Aries. Oh gosh, it's give me tons. Wow. They give me tons. Right. In this case, let me just make myself a coffee. I'll be right back. Okay. Aries. They gave me tons for you, right? Um, so maybe my guides are not with it because this is a love life reading for each sign time stamped. This is not separate readings. In any case, here's what you got. You got excellence. Unicorns, the Ice Age and Blessings. When you put this all together, when it comes to love life, and this sounds a bit weird, maybe not, but what the guides are saying to you, the expectation is for you to be the best version you can be before you can truly, truly expect um a fulfilled relationship so should you be in a relationship then also in that relationship you have to be the best version of yourself which also means to cut you some slack here aries um is to be in a relationship where you can be yourself right so they're not asking you to change but what they're saying is at times this is the energy that i'm getting in order for you to retract and to maintain a proper relationship of sorts, don't know what the Italian movement here means, uh, <laughs> um, they're asking you to have really high energy and be um, the best version because that's your excellence part. And then you have the unicorns, which is a bit of a weird thing, but it has to do with the third eye. It's about understanding that your choices have to come from your spiritual self don't sounds really weird don't go for people that are super appealing physically everybody has something that they obviously uh, are drawn to and i'm not knocking it right they're not asking you to 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 just date anybody that you're not drawn to don't hear this wrong but the point they're making is um should you have any tendencies you know i want my blah 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 my partner to look like this that's all bollocks it doesn't work that way and all the guys are saying is be the best version of yourself and then the best version of someone else can come to you regardless of how you feel they should look, which is also pretentious. Remember, you can't do that, right? So be open-minded about what is coming to you because you have the Ice Age here as the next energy. Um, and what they're saying is, because the Ice Age is obviously means the past, it is one thing, to go back into the past and you are asked to reflect 
how you manifested into the past, what happened to you in the past. And remember that some of the past relationships, uh, energies still sit inside you. But you cannot be guided by it, right? Because the last energy here is blessings. So let the past die. Let the past, let bygones be bygones. Um, the, law, the more grudges you hold, the less it is released, the less it is released, the more the next person will have to have traits uh, of the old person to trigger this out, all that kind of stuff. So there are blessings coming your way already, uh, Aries. But what is needed is a shift in how you see things, right? So um, should there be an element inside you, which is what I'm getting here, uh, or should there be an element to you that sort of, you know, and you get, I get this, what I'm getting is for Aries is you may be an Aries that looks after yourself well, I get that. And they're not asking you to, to, to get someone that doesn't look after themselves. But the moment you feel like, oh, you know, look how cute my girlfriend is, look how cute my boyfriend is, and then sort of show them off how well you're doing, if that makes sense. Again, this is a general reading. It may not be for all Aries, I get that. It's just I can't shake the energy that there is this look how well I'm doing part. Uh, and, and I'm not saying you, you, you mean anything by it, but that just doesn't flow here at all. So allow your partner to come in based on you being the best version of yourself. Let the past go. Let it go uh, uh, completely, if possible, because blessings are coming your way once you have done that. Right? Bloody hell. <laughs> Here we go, Aries. That was your love life reading for September 2023. Moving on to the next star sign, which is Taurus. Taurians, are you ready? Let's have a look what, what we got for you. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Taurus. The energy here is confusing to say the least. On one side, they're asking you to be super sensitive, not forceful at all, very understanding, very slow in your approach to, 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 to love, in your approach to you know, making things work, be very understanding. And then the next energy is like, uh, super passionate. So, what I'm trying to show, what the guides are showing me here, which is uh, I find that difficult to just pull it together in a way, is what you can expect for your for your fulfillment. Sounds sounds very wrong. There is a high in in the relationship that they're showing me, whether or not you're already in it or it is coming. There is an energy that is highly physical. And so, therefore, have you, should you not have made peace with um, physical pleasures, with being looked at, being touched, all that kind of stuff, they ask you to make peace with it. Yeah. Okay? So, I'm getting this quite strongly, and I'm not, I'm not getting here that you should be, um, uh, that you just understand, okay, well, that's just part of a relationship that someone wants to touch me, that kind of stuff. There's more to it. But what the guides are saying is, Having a physical part in a relationship is not supposed to feel shit, right? But somehow there is that energy here uh, about you maybe having been made um, to feel that you're not beautiful or maybe someone just, you know, you felt used, that kind of energy. All the guys are saying is you can be sensitive, and sensible. What I'm also getting is, is for you to say to whoever you're in a relationship is or whoever is coming your way that when it comes to physical enjoyment and even being looked at, um, for that person to understand that they have to deserve you first, right? So I'm not getting this um, be quick thing here, um, but I'm getting a bit of an issue for Taurus with physicality and being um, engaging uh, in, in lovemaking, which is what they're sort of showing me here without being explicit. Yeah, okay. But there's a there's a bit of a of a thing where the guides are saying to you is what we want you to also experience in the relationship is um, a good understanding of physical pleasure because you are a spiritual being 
in a physical body. So why not also enjoy that, right? Again, before we move on to the next star sign, Taurus, this feels a lot like there is some trauma that still sits inside you. And rather than hoping that this eventually goes away or, or not picking another partner at all or, you know, that kind of energy, um, it's about understanding that the way you communicate how you want to be treated um, seems to be super important in the new relationship, right? Okay, that's that. Now we're going to the sign of Gemini. Let's see what we got for Gemini. This is your love life reading for September 2023 with myself, Thomas Janak. Please like, subscribe and share. Now, quite interesting. Gemini, you are quite open to manifesting love and should you be in a relationship, everything here is, is like, okay, this can be sorted, can be fixed, can be arranged to be um, positive. So you have, you have Neptune, which is uh, um, all about spiritual understanding, and you have the Midheaven, which is sort of the, um, the middle of your birth chart. But also there is some uh, 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 numerology aspect here. So when it comes to um, relationships, we only really learn in intimate relationships, but we have in numerology, we have pinnacle numbers. And the pinnacle number is telling you when there are challenges coming. Now, in your energy are challenges nonetheless. All the guides are saying is what is important for you in anything, in any anything to do with, with intimate relationship is to understand that unless you know that you can trust the person you're with, nothing is working. So that's the thing you have to work on, right? How do I feel this? But what doesn't work for you, Gemini, is when you're trying to keep yourself safe. It doesn't quite work that way. Once you know what you don't want, you manifest better, if that makes sense. Um, so, but the person you are with, really has to um, has to be able to um, gain your trust first, if that makes sense. So, that, so, Gemini, it feels a bit slow. It feels like, okay, if you are a person that waits for the knight in shiny armor, make sure that uh, that armor comes off very slowly, <laughs> right? So, it feels like nothing can be rushed here and shouldn't, and nothing should be rushed here. At the same time, you have high energy, um, you have high energy uh, um, symbolism here. So what the guides are saying is, you know, the new relationship, the next relationship, the relationship you're in um, can be amazing because you're moving from stumbling blocks to making it work. The first energy, which is the Neptune energy, has the number 26. Six and two is eight. Eight is the number of stumbling blocks. So you have the number eight, right? And if you see things from a different point of view, which means you delegate inside the relationship, it topples over, it becomes infinity. And then your midheaven number uh, is 36. Three and six is nine. Nine is the number of completion. So you're already moving towards reaching a relationship that is worth having, but there are some small things, which are the pinnacles, which is the, the difficulties, um, that still need to maybe even... Uh, either be redirected, um, and what I'm getting is it's to redirect it verbally. Um, so you 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 tell someone um, how you feel, which is quite interesting and difficult to do sometimes because opening up uh, again um, requires depth and and is the first step of trusting. If that makes sense, all the guys are saying you you got this. Um, and in the energy here, because you have the met heaven, so every birth chart, when you're being born, the universe takes a snapshot, so to speak, it's your birth chart. Everybody has one. So your mid heaven has already arrived. So what the guides are saying is, um, if you're not in a relationship, we are so ready to send you one. And if you are in a relationship, look at it, make it work, because you got the number of completion. This could work. And if it's not working, if you are in the first part of your reading, if you're still at a stumbling block and the stumbling block has been going on for quite some time, then you have to make a decision. Okay, Gemini, that was your love life reading for the month of September 2023. You are watching Thomas's Tower readings. Please like, subscribe and share and share widely, please. 
And now we're looking at Cancer. This is your Love Life reading for the month of September 2023. Okay, now, Cancerians. The energy here is not what you can expect or are expecting of a partner. This is about equality. So you have the energy of cross-pollinating and you have the energy of transits. So transits are energies that are changing. Cross-pollination means um, to get your ideas in and then roll with the changes. So what the guides are saying to you is if you find yourself... Um, either repeating relationships that ultimately fail or you are in a relationship where only one part partner does the work, that's not working. So the first thing you do, and you have number three here, the number of progress, right? When you have the, the cross-pollination energy here. Um, what the guides are saying to you <laughs> is manifest relationships that are open to change, that are open to ideas, that are open to your input, because your input is valuable and valid, right? <coughs> but you also have to understand that in a relationship, even if you're, should you be in one now, or the one that's coming, because there is transits, what will not happen, uh, very likely, Cancerians, is this, boom, here is the person, and this is the person. That is my person, right? So what I'm not getting for you is to be um, that person that meets your your so-called soulmate and everything works all at once. Doesn't quite feel that way. There will be changes still that, that, that need to be manifested, but it starts with you saying to the person, right, that's who I am, that's what happened to me. So the way they show it to me, the, my, it's just how my guides work, they show me a relationship Right? Two nondescript people, and everybody has a suitcase as they meet in someone's flat for the first time. And in the suitcase is all the crap that both of you carry. And then in the first couple of weeks, um, you know, the honeymoon phase, whatever you want to call it, nobody looks at the suitcases. And eventually they get opened. Um, and it is important for them to be opened, if that makes sense. But all in good time. Ultimately, the first couple of weeks before the suitcases get opened is about already going away from the honeymoon phase, but also saying like, yeah, I like the energy we have together. So let's figure out who are you, who am I, and how can we make this work combining our ideas, right? So again, um, it doesn't quite feel like it's flowing very well yet. There is some work that needs to be done, Cancerians, but it is about understanding that your, your input, your ideas ought to be heard. Okay, that's that. Moving from uh, Cancer into the sign of Leo, let's see what we got for Leos. This is your Love Life reading for September 2023. You're watching Thomas's Tower readings. Please like, subscribe and share. Uh, sorry, it just cracks me up here. Um, just the way my guys show this to me. Because when it comes to Leos in September, you have telepathy and water. So telepathy means that the less you have to explain yourself in a relationship, or when you are trying to convince yourself that, that you are the one, <laughs> uh, the better. Right? So telepathy actually means silent language. So Look for someone that you can have silence with that is not awkward. It doesn't mean they expect you to sit there and do om after, you know, sit under a tree, do om, not talk. I'm not getting that. But um, it is time for you to be with people that make you 150% at ease without uh, needing um, to think about what do we have in common, what can we talk about, what can we create here, right, uh, to fulfill us both. It has to be or what's coming here, energetically speaking, is a relationship that allows you to just be and flow, which is where the water element comes in, because water is renewal. So what they're saying to you is, 
you know, manifest a relationship where it is perfectly fine to not having to do anything. Just be. And the other person, you know, feeling the same thing. Doesn't feel super easy to manifest that, if that makes sense, to be fair. But uh, all the guides are saying is that is really what is needed for Leos. Um, and what they show me is the, the depiction of, of Leo, a, a, a male lion, who needs a lot of me times because he's walking his perimeter. <laughs> so while I'm not seeing any of you um, needing time away, because that's not what this is, is, you know, being, being less asked to um, create scenarios to make memories is the way forward here, right? If you can be with someone where it is just okay to kind of go like, oh, let's just relax um, and be comfortable by just being together. Um, that's what is um, on the cards for you. And this is also what you ought to be creating, right? Leo, that was your love life reading for September 2023. Um, now we're moving into Virgo. Let's have a look what we got for Virgo. <sighs> okay, Virgo, here it comes. You have the Descendant and you have Chiron, the Wounded Healer. Now, the Ascendant, the Ascendant, your rising sign, is literally what sits on the eastern horizon when you're being born. That's the sort of time of birth energy in your chart. And the Ascendant is like a, a best buddy who has an inner voice that, that, that um, guides you. While the Descendant is the guy that helps the Ascendant when the Ascendant doesn't get through. And what is needed from you is to be a bit more proactive and, be, and do the Descendant's job. So it is your job at this point in time to invite in change, to invite in new beginnings because they will heal. They will lead to healing, which is what, what Chiron is, the wounded healer. And you have um, a snake on this depiction here. And you have the number 8 and 2 is 10, is new beginning. The card of the first uh, energy here is 37. 7 and 3 is 10 which means one new beginning. Both energies here tell you there is a new beginning coming your way. If you're in a relationship, then also in that relationship, a new beginning should be happening. But it all starts by you um, claiming what you want and at the same time allowing yourself the energy and time you need to fully heal, right? So this has to be a relationship, um, uh, again, the way I'm getting this. I, don't, I obviously have no idea uh, who finds these videos and how old you are. This is not an age thing. But I'm getting the need for being mature. I can't pronounce that word very well. You know, so in my vision, I see uh, people that, that have lived a little. <laughs> they're not in their, in their, they're not 15, right? In my, or, or, or even 20 in my vision. It just means like someone who, who has been, um, has been in relationships before, knows now how to treat you, knows now how to um, claim what is important to them, has no, no issues with, um, with, with communication, that sort of stuff. And you being, being the mirror that has the same, issue, the, the, the same strengths, that's what I'm getting for a relationship, to be like Virgos. Okay, that is that. That was your Love Life reading for the month of September 2023. Moving on to the seventh sign, which is Libra, the sign of harmony and balance. Let's see what we got for Libras. Okay. Libra, when it comes to attracting love and when it comes to making a relationship work, at this point in time, it is a tad difficult because I get the energy of Mercury, which is about messages, and I get the energy of Uranus, which is about change. Now, the number of change is five. The number of communication is also five. 
So Mercury, one of the closest planets to the Sun, and Uranus, one of the outer planets, one of the, the, the planets further away, they share an energy together. That energy is communication and change. And you got both depictions here, right? By communication and change. Now, the good thing is that when it comes to messages, you have the number 20. We don't count the zero, right? Um, so you have the number two, which means couples, which means unity. You are <coughs> honest and open and you bring everything that needs to be looked at to the table. <coughs> That's how you then can bring about the change that is needed. Once you go into your energy of yes, let's work on this, let's change this. You have the number 25. 5 and 2 is 7. 7 is the highest number of protection and healing. <coughs> so the way to manifest this is by not being shy. Um, because sometimes it's just a matter of looking at, you know, conversing, you know, what, what needs to, to sort of be looked at. And then look at it. And sometimes it's just about, uh, it's just a matter of tweaking things slightly to make things work. So the good thing is in the energy here of uh, Mercury and Uranus, um, this isn't about breaking up. This isn't about this not working. This is just about, you know, making slight changes and be on the same sheet when it comes to communication. Okay, that is that. Now moving into Scorpio. Let's see what we got for Scorpio. So, I just stopped the video for a second. You will hardly notice, but I, I need to cough. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> Scorpio, this is your love life reading for September 2023. And you have clairvoyance and the high priestess. All that means is when it comes to you attracting an intimate relationship, being in an intimate relationship at this point in time, what works best is when you find someone or are with someone or make sure that you are manifesting someone or are with someone, like, like the guys have said, where you don't need to explain anything. Someone who just gets you. That's what you really need, energetically speaking. And the high priestess is the energy of, mm, sounds a bit weird, of a high woman, a high priestess here, of a high feminine energy. So it's about, you know, being Mother Earth in the relationship. You know, you just feel it. And, and you feel that there's not, not one ounce of difficulties between you. Right? While this is not so super easy to manifest, it's just that um, what you're being asked is, just from the get-go, is to not settle for less. Right? That's a really important thing. And because you're energetically speaking quite a deep being, quite a deep person, say to the universe, send me someone who matches my depth. Right? That's the way to go. Okay? That was Scorpio short and sweet. Now we're going into Sagittarius. Let's have a look. Sagittarius, are you ready? This is your love life reading for the month of September 2023. You're watching Thomas Atara readings. Please like, subscribe and share. <coughs> mm. Okay. Sagittarians, you have almost opposing energies here. You have dignified or strength and you have reviewing and retrograde. Now, this is all a bit, uh, uh, it is confusing, energetically speaking. Let's put it this way. In any relationship that you manifest or that you are in, respect is a two-way street. You should be respectful, your partner should be respectful. The, the one and the most important thing for you to manifest is respect. And at the same time, they're asking you to review why it has been so difficult to manifest this into a relationship, if that makes sense. So what I'm not getting is, is for you to wait until this trauma has sort of passed, right? But if you can say to someone in a relationship, you know, that at times you do have second thoughts that, does, that do not mean that you're actually uh, leaving. 
It just means at times you will be more reflective. It makes it a little less romantic, right? If, you, if you're watching the person you're with. But apparently you do have some reason to do that and you do have some issues that you're carrying with you that have to do from uh, that have come from being disrespected so it sits inside you quite deeply and all the guys are saying is well we're in the process of, of changing it for you right and it can all work um, but because it comes up here <clears throat> um, just be either upfront about it in a relationship or just understand that this is a trauma that has been sitting with you for quite some time and may still take some time before it fully leaves. Okay, so that was uh, Sagittarius going to Capricorn. Let's see what we got for Capricorn. Capricorn, this is your September 2023 Love Life reading. You're watching Thomas Attar readings with myself, Thomas Yannack. Now, how bloody awesome is this Capricorns? You have abundance coming in and you have balance coming in. What the guides are saying is your manifestations do work, right? So what needed to happen for you to, before you could manifest, sounds wrong, a better version <laughs> of whoever you're with or, or, or where with, is to allow for things to change. Either you changed and therefore said, because I'm changing, I can now see what I no longer need. The other person, the new person, the next person, or even the person that you're with now needed to change, um, to adapt to your growth, if that makes sense, right? But there's abundance coming in. Jupiter is coming in. Jupiter is the happy-go-lucky planet. So what they're saying is, you know, you're doing well. You're manifesting well. Because now that you're manifesting what you deserve rather than what you want, to happen or what you hope, if that makes sense, um, you're on the right track here. And then your balance card, obviously it's the Libra card, which is the seventh house, therefore it has the number seven on it. Seven is the highest number of protection and healing, right? So uh, once you understand that a person has to deserve you first and that you are an energy or energetically speaking, a person with quite, mm, sounds a bit weird, it's just the way the guides give it to me, you have some morals, right? So, so honesty is really, really important. And transpar transparency is really important here in the energy. And all of this is coming your way, right? So sound, sounds great for Capricorns. You, you have made quite a bit of headway when it comes to manifestation, right? Okay, so moving on to Aquarius, Aquarius, Aquarians. This is your... September 2023, Love Life Reading with myself, Thomas Janak. You are watching Thomas's Tower Readings. Please like, subscribe and share. And what the guides are saying is sort of short and sweet. You have Vesta. And what the guides are saying, your light has always shone and always shone brightly. The issue is, because of your imprint of being the water bearer and the giver, you sometimes settled for less and you oftentimes have proven to be the person that is more supportive than the other person was to you. So the number of the card is 32, 3 and 2 is 5, number of change. That has now changed. You have now reached a state... Um, Maybe it's, it's a state of, of maturity, a state of understanding yourself um, that makes it now easier to manifest a more equal relationship. It's on the way, it is coming. Right? Because you have the number of change, should you be in a relationship, please reflect on you know, who is the more supportive partner here and is this actually equal? Because that's really what your soul wants, needs, and to a certain extent also deserves. Okay, that's that. Moving on to the final sign, which is Pisces. Pisceans, this is your September 2023 general reading. So general reading, love life reading. With myself, Thomas Yannick, you're watching Thomas Attar readings. Let's just see what you've got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Pisces myself. I love what we got here. Four Pisceans. We have Venus, which is about love and be loved. And we have the fourth house, which is about um, coming home, right? If that makes sense. So, four 
Pisceans. I have recorded a general reading for the sign of Pisces not too long ago and I remember that the Venus card was the first card that came up in that reading too. So when it comes to being loved, feeling loved, our time has come and I say that because I am Pisces myself, right? Um, and we have the number 21, 2 and 1 is 3, 3 is progress. So what you can expect is to now enter into a relationship um, that goes forwards, right? So what doesn't help and what doesn't work for you at all, Pisceans, stop procrastinating, stop thinking, oh, uh, I've seen that before in the other uh, partner, let the past gone be gone. Right? You understand? What I'm getting here stronger is in order for you to go forward, you have to completely dismiss whatever the heck happened to you in other relationships. It has no, it has no bearing. Right? And as long as you understand, yeah, I've, I've, I've learned from this. I know what I don't, I, what I don't want. I also know what I do not, uh, what I would no longer accept. So you're manifesting differently. And, and this has worked. So we're getting a lot of um, love coming in that is true love which means you can be just yourself, uh, which is absolutely awesome. And then you have home. So remember, don't shoot the messenger. But what I'm getting here is, and again, it might be a bit scary even sometimes for Pisceans because we are quite free spirits. What I'm getting is that, that the relationship that is being manifested here leads you home. And home is not a location, it's a state of mind. So the energy here flows into this one, the next one, the new one, maybe even the current one, is a keeper. I know it. But if the keeping um, is tedious, then obviously it's not a keeper. Because you have the number 21 in the first energy, which is about progressive progression. And then you have the fourth house and home. Uh, and the number 42, which is 6. Now, 6 is the element of ether. Ether is known as glue. So, you're holding on to that partner, if that makes sense, without holding on too tight. Right? This is about, yeah, I want to hold on to this. This is worth me investing energy into that relationship, but it's not a needy one. Right? So, it feels to me, for us Pisceans, fingers crossed, because I'm a Pisces myself, as I, as I mentioned, is that the next relationship that is being that is being manifesting, that is coming our way, is a serious one in the sense that it is sustainable, right? So the times for bloody one night stands and two week relationships uh, uh, and all that kind of shit that ultimately do not fulfill Pisceans uh, on the long in the long run um, has come and gone. The universe has listened understood that what you really want is sustainability and it's coming your way and you can be just yourself if that makes sense um that is awesome i like this now i said that before because i recorded the the the, the, the videos for the other for, for all 12 signs and i noticed that september on the whole even though it is a it is a planet where we sorry a time where we go from summer to we go from summer to autumn, right? And um, so autumn is the beginning of letting go fully. But September is the ninth month, is coming to the end of cycles. And because there is a lot that needs to fall by the wayside, September, when I think back on the videos that I recorded for each sign, and you will find them here on that channel, um, September is not the easiest month when it comes to flow. It doesn't flow super easily, if that makes sense. And the, all the relationships that readings that I just did fall into it, if that makes sense, right? But um, that's what I have uh, for all of you. It's really, really important to understand that, you know, just because the month itself may have ups and downs, you have had all your advice for, um, for what to expect and give it you all regardless of whether or not uh, September as such um, feels so great. Okay, guys, thank you so much. That's all we got. Um, see you all very soon. Please like, subscribe and share. See you soon. Bye-bye.